القران اجين والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا وان الله مع علي مع المحسنين لذو الله سبحانه وتعالى those who strive hard for us الله سبحانه وتعالى suddenly guide them in our ways and Allah سبحانه وتعالى is mostly a most solely with the duas of the of the good and then i i forgot to mention one hadith when i was saying uh, about the shaitan and that verse down there anas narrated that anas bin malik narrated that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said on that day and then the, the hell will say that to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they ask hell are you are you filled up the hell will say hal min mazid and then they said the hell what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put his foot onto it and the hell will say cut 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 mean enough 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 allahu akbar so do not allow devil to deceive you so when you come to striving in the path of allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala how does it relate to one's uh, spiritual journey is that know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide those that strive in the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as i mentioned when he says, you know, you know, striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't only mean like going to the battlefield or like even coming to this gathering here. It's a jihad because what? Your time. MashaAllah. Sheikh is quoting the hadith already. <coughs> even, even to seek a knowledge, it's a what? It's a jihad. And it related to one's personal journey. As I mentioned, you have seen in the Gambia here, and people, they will be having a lot of money. But they will not strive in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they may attain success. That is why those that are in the, in the tax of dawah, try your best to reach out people and educate them. Let them know the hudud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let them know the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if not, it will not favor them. And they will not have the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet said, as I mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just, just think about it. Striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than everything you are looking in this life. Everything. <coughs> everything there's there's nothing better than sacrificing in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then here people when they are striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they can what they can be a person that's another problem you will see in people you know striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will be like I'm give up brother I've been doing this for so many years I've seen nothing I remember one of my boy, and we were talking, and then he was, he, he told me that, my brother, me, I always do tahajjud, always, but I've seen no change in my life. I told him, brother, keep doing. <coughs> you may not know that maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with something that you, you can't even imagine. Maybe you may be in a vehicle. Maybe there will be an accident in the vehicle. Everybody going to die except you. You may not know that maybe the dua you make in your tahajjud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted that. And then you'll be complaining. <coughs> and <laughs> what, what happened, the brother, after the fallen here, and the brother, what he is looking for, and then he got that one. And he called me, he told me that. My brother, Tahajjud is working. I told him, now you know that Tahajjud is working, my brother. He said, yeah, now he's working. I've, I started praying this week, and then my prayer has answered automatically. No. I said, no, even your previous duas, they were answered. He said, I don't know that one, but this other one has answered. <laughs> and he was very, very happy, mashallah. So uh, let's all try our utmost best to strive in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you in his way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I think if you have any further question about that one, then we can.
الله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبشر الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أن لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار كلما رزقوا منها من ثمرة رزقا قالوا هذا قالوا هذا الذي رزقنا من قبل وأتوا به متشابها ولهم فيها أزواج مطهرة وهم فيها خالدون إن الله لا يستحي أن يضرب مثلا ما بعوضة فما فوقها فأما الذين آمنوا فيعلمون أنه الحق من ربهم وأما الذين كفروا فيقولون ماذا أراد الله بهذا مثلا يضل به كثيرا يضل به كثيرا ويهدي به كثيرا وما يضل به إلا الفاسقين الذين ينقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ويقطعون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويفسدون في الأرض أولئك هم الخاسرون كيف تكفرون بالله وكنتم أمواتا فأحياكم ثم يميتكم ثم يحييكم ثم إليه ترجعون هو الذي خلق لكم ما في الأرض جميعا ثم استوى إلى السماء ثم استوى إلى السماء فسواهن سبع سماوات وهو بكل شيء عليم الله من سرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ومن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وسلم Brothers and sisters in Islam I greet you all in the Islamic way of greeting the greeting of the people of Jannah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Before moving further I will seek guidance from Allah Azza wa Jalla by saying رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد. I'm given a topic which reads the role of intention in striving in the path of Allah. It would have been befitting if other shiuk that are sitting before me were given this topic to deal with. We are very young and the knowledge is very small. to be given this topic to present on. But inshallah, we'll try as we learn from our brothers and shaykh, inshallah. First, we have to understand something from the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with regards to intention. Intention has a whole hadith in the sayings of the Prophet, which is, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ 
wa inna ma li kulli imri'in ma nawa and the hadith goes on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that deeds are based on intentions that would mean for every deed it is judged and it is rewarded according to the intention it is accompanied with so when we say the role of intention in the striving of or in the striving in the way of allah this is very vital for everything you do as a means of striving in the way of allah your intention needs to be pure for example as a believer you performing an act of worship without the intention of doing it just the bodily act of it it will render it useless null and void as allah azza wa jalla said in the holy quran wa qadimna ila ma amilu min amalin fajalnahu haba mansura yawm al qiyamah you will come and your deeds will be rendered vain because you never had the intention to do it we have to understand that in this din you don't have to please people this intention issue is always tampered with when you want to do things for people to praise you when you want to earn worldly gains that is only when your intention is tampered with but if you do things solely for the sake of allah your intention is never tampered with we have to make sure the intention or the purpose the motive behind every deed is just for the sake of allah deeds without intention are useless yawm al qiyamah for example the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the first person to be thrown in jahannam yawm al qiyamah will be a qari a qari who is a qari a reciter of the holy quran why it will sound so absurd that a reciter will be the first person to be thrown into jahannam why because of the motives behind the person's recitation may allah grant us ikhlas may allah prevent our deeds from sowing off wallahi if we are not taking care of the intentions and our emotions during acts of worship they will be useless and it will affect us in dunya and akhirah you will not achieve anything in dunya and in akhirah it will be worse the person will come yawm al qiyamah and be bragging before allah that i was a qari i was a giver of charity i was a doer of good and allah will ask the person the blessings i gave you the favors i gave you what did you put them into how did you practice them and the person will probably say allah i did it for the sake of you i recited your quran your words i gave charity i helped people the widows and the orphans but the beautiful thing about the lordship of allah is he knows what, what is in the heart wallahu alimun bi dhat sudur allah knows what is in the heart no one can fool him out no one can play around with allah so he would tell the individual who did his deeds for the sake of people or for the sake of gaining fame that kadhabta you have lied you did it for people to praise you for people to say so and so is a good reciter so and so is a good giver so and so he is very good in praying and that was what you gained the people have said it and here you will be thrown to jahannam and the past you will be carried to jahannam may allah protect us from that with some reference here um we have the importance of intent on in certain acts of worship for example salah if one is praying because your colleagues are going to pray the other one is called when you are alone you don't go for salah when you are in your house you don't pray tahajjud you don't do any act of worship you continue your daily activities your routine but because you spend the night with a brother in your house purposely you set an alarm at night to wake up for tahajjud that tahajjud you are doing the brother will seemingly be fooled that you are praying tahajjud and this is continual it's cultural whereas you are just doing it to please that brother and to remind us this is an act of shirk the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has classified this as minor shirk you're doing things to please people you are putting people in the place of allah so we have to do away with that may allah prefer, purify our intentions our, and our deeds from this another thing is in fasting saum we also understand that before one would engage in fasting there is this intention that you need to establish first so it is showing that is a matter that we cannot go without with we always have to be always have to have in mind that the intent intention for what we do 
always matters. It always classifies the deeds as to be considered. And then we bring another case of the individual that killed 99 people. And he went to an individual to ask him a way out for repentance. And the man so ignorantly told him that you killed 99 people, therefore your repentance will not be accepted. As a result, he said, then let me kill you to complete the 100. Since it will not be accepted, 99 is a digit, but 100 will be the best digit to kill people if my repentance will not be accepted. If 99 will not be accepted, then let me just complete it 100. And he killed the man, he carried on. After meeting another individual, he was told that no matter what he does, Allah can forgive the sins. In Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha. Allah does not forgive the one that associates partners with him except what he forgives if he wish another sin. So that means if you die in the state of shirk, you associate partners with Allah, you die in that state, Allah will not forgive you. But if you repent before that, he will forgive. In the, on the other hand, if you do any other sin, Allah can forgive you. Therefore, in Allah, does should not make the other man tell him that if you repent, it will not be accepted. So, after being told that, he was directed to a place to go and perform his repentance on his way before teaching, he died. So, there was this push and pull between the angels that record good deeds and bad deeds. That he will go to Jannah, the other one said, it will, he will go to hell. According to the narration, the man was finally classified or qualified as a person that will go to Jannah because he had the intention to repent, although he has not reached. So we see the importance of repentance. It means even if you have not actually executed the deed with the intention of goodness, Allah can reward you. So we stop here for Salah, inshallah, and we will return. Hada sallallahu alayhi wa nabiyyina Muhammad. Ahmed Munajji, he wrote a book called Kitab al-Ikhlas. In that book, he brought a beautiful statement that I deem it befitting before we go for Salah. Let us go with that, inshallah. He brought the hadith that the Sheikh mentioned, hadith Nadab Umar bin Khattab. The hadith is found in Sahih Muslim, found in Yani Arbaun and Nawi, hadith number one, and also in Sahih Muslim, hadith number one. Where beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, These are judged based on the intention. Sufyan al Thawri, he said that he, if he wishes, he will love it every book. Before every scholar write a book, they must write it at the first page of the book. Because why, whosoever do deeds based on what I based on. Any other intention apart from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah, it will not be accepted. There is a believer, Shaykh Allah ibn Qayyim al Jaws, wrote a book called Al Ruh, chapter 1, verse 132. He said, Allah make a devotion that you worship only Him, and your deeds will not be accepted until you fulfill certain conditions. And the first condition He brought is we have to do it solely for the sake of Allah. And what the Shaykh has mentioned, our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the hadith that is narrated by Abu Huraira, the hadith is found in Sahih Muslim. He said, Awwalu man tu sahara bi unnara yawm al kiyama thalatha. He said, the first three people that Allah will in the fire of Jahannam are three people that have done a very very good deed if it was done solely for the sake of Allah it will grant them Jannah and the first uh, and the first among them is the one who strives in the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who does jihad but he was doing it so that people can be like wow this man fought a lot in the part of Allah the second is the one who gives charity and the third is the one who recites the Quran teaching orders with the intention of people praise him subhanallah wallahi I believe Sheikh Allama Sheikh Abdul Ayy Sheikh Abdul Razak Ibn Muhsin he used to say a beautiful statement he said Allah knows what is in your heart Allah knows what is in your heart the people that you are doing deeds for Today they will praise you, subhanAllah, they will be like, you know what, this man is like this, this sister is like this. Tomorrow they will back back you. That is why the wise among the people are those who do their deeds solely for the sake of Allah. Remember Allah says in the Quran, Quran, in Surah Al-Nahal, chapter 16, verse 19, Allah says, Wallahu ya'lamu ma tusiru na ma that Allah knows that what you conceal and that what you declare. Allah says in the gross Quran, in Surah Al-Zumar, chapter 39, verse 70, Allah says, وَوْفِيَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسِ مَا عَمِلَةُ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا بِمَا يَفْعَلُونَ that Allah Azza wa Jal will hold us responsible for what we have done because He knows what is in our heart. Allah says in the Gross Quran in Surah Al Isra, chapter 17, verse 25, Allah says, Rabbukum a'lamu bima fi nufusikum in takunu salihin fa innahu kana lil awabina ghafura. What confess? There is the ikhlas. Do your deed solely for the sake of Allah. Whatever you do, your deed so that people can praise you. Man, our tongue are flexible, right? Today I'll praise you, mashallah. Tomorrow I may back bear to you. That is why the wise among us are those who do their deeds solely for the sake of Allah. May Allah grant us al-ikhlas in our deeds.
have to get married for it to help you to be able to control more of your desire. And inshallah, maybe during my topic, I will elaborate more on that, inshallah. Inshallah, thank you. Allah, 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 Allah,